iOS 4.2 does seem to have fixed a number of problems that were uh, visible in the earlier beta versions, uh, one of which is the operation of remote. If I go to remote now, it's actually able to find my library. If I uh, select something at random to play, it actually is able to play it. And this is uh, playing now from my, um, my Mac OS system. I can pause and uh, play back. That's all very well and good. Um, movie playback control, I think, leaves something to be desired. I can select a movie to play back. Jung And it does uh, enable playback control, and I can pause. But I don't have uh, the full set of on-screen controls that are available on the Mac OS system. For instance, I can't expand the image to full screen. And I think that is a disadvantage. Uh, I think all of the controls should be available to the remote application. But right now, it's just playback, pause, and volume. and that's. That's not really enough to make for a good remote. Another problem that seems to have been fixed is Wi-Fi connectivity. Over several days of use now, I haven't had any Wi-Fi connectivity issues or mysterious disconnects. However, surprisingly, Safari is still exhibiting unexpected stability problems. Let's go to the Weather Underground site where I've had problems before. and then try to navigate around in the site by getting the weather for a specific zip code. And it quits. If we go back to the multitasking bar, we'll see that Safari is running. And it does return to the last page before it mysteriously bailed out. But once again, if I try to get back into the page I was looking for, quits again. This is actually very surprising. I, I really expected that the Safari uh, stability issues would be solved by the time of the uh, final release. Uh, once again, this is the Goldmaster version, so I'll, I'll have to check and see if the uh, public release version has an improvement or if perhaps there's an update to Safari. Perhaps the biggest disappointment in this version of iOS 4.2 is the lack of ability to do printing to shared printers. Uh, Apple is touting the AirPrint feature, and originally it was intended that developers would be able to test AirPrint by printing to shared printers under a Mac OS system. I currently have that set up, but when I go to actually try to print something, in this case I'm just going to print the Google homepage, 
it can't find the printer and it never will uh, because uh, Apple has basically given up for now on trying to do air print to shared printers uh, you can do air print to the ePrint enabled HP printers that are available uh, I consider this very undesirable to have to buy a new printer just to implement printing on the iPad but basically that's what users are left with it looks like uh, air print to shared printers under Mac OS is simply a no-show and there's no telling when that will be implemented I'd also like to note uh, that uh, with the latest version of iOS there's now a new version of iTunes and if we go into iTunes, we'll notice that there is now Ping. Finally, Ping has arrived for the iPad. And Ping is there. So, um, essentially, I, I, the iPad has caught up finally with the iPhone 4. I'd like to make a, just a final closing comment about uh, the direction of iOS 4.2 and beyond. All through the development of iOS and its uh, user interface, Apple has very, very definitely avoided making use of anything that might be construed as a window. Uh, everything is full screen once you're in the application. And uh, in the latest back to the Mac uh, trend, Apple is even applying that full screen approach to uh, Mac OS. But it does have some disadvantages, and I think the key disadvantage is the ability to display real time information that the user might be interested in that might be provided by a particular app, such as an uh, email application uh, or other applications such as uh, GPS. Uh, there's, there's simply no mechanism to do that in iOS. This is really, really essential for a phone or a mobile type um, device. And I think Apple will ultimately need to come around to this approach. But that would be a major, major change in the whole iOS philosophy. And I'm not sure how they would ever approach that. I think the easiest way to do it might be to make the multitasking bar something that is always on display or at least can be always on display rather than just something that's an option to the normal home screen and then within the multitasking bar there could be a provision for real-time data updating so that the user could see for instance what email had just arrived or um, get other real-time information such as GPS or news feeds. Um, iOS really does need this capability and um, it doesn't have it yet.